What do you think about Tylenol? I like it. It works. <laughs> well, I'm about to ruin it a bit for you. Uh-huh. So, when you buy Tylenol, you think you're getting this unique product, this painkiller called Tylenol, but you're not. You're actually getting something called acetaminophen. Tylenol is just the brand name for this drug, acetaminophen. So what, like Kleenex? Yeah, basically Tylenol is a great example of the power of marketing, and the history of acetaminophen, that drug in Tylenol, is interesting. Wait, will this information do anything for me? Yeah, it'll save you some money. Okay, shoot. So the Tylenol marketing story starts all the way back in 1886. They had Tylenol back in the 1880s? No, no, not exactly. But it all begins in France with this poor bloke dying of intestinal parasites. Ew. Yeah, he's not doing well. And his two physicians, doctors Arnold Kahn and Paul Hepp, not knowing what else to do, make a last-ditch effort to save him and prescribe him naphthalene. But what happens instead when this guy goes to the apothecary is some sloppy pharmacist accidentally gives him something called acetanilide which is a completely different, really obscure drug at the Uh, time. Oh no. Yeah, but luckily it doesn't immediately kill him. In fact, Hep and Khan notice the acetanilide actually lowers the guy's fever. Does he die? Yeah, he or she eventually bites the dust. But our story is just getting started. Ten years later, a German researcher discovers our accidental acetanilide is getting metabolized by the body into acetaminophen. Not only that, but it does indeed have analgesic effects. The guy in France wasn't just making it up. But then everything just kind of stops. The European doctors know acetanilide gets converted to acetaminophen, but a series of wars break out and society forgets entirely about this weird painkiller for about 50 years. So during two world wars. It's not until 1950 when our story picks up again, this time in Philadelphia, where a small ambitious pharmaceutical company called McNeil Laboratories comes on the scene, and they begin to look for a new product that can really boost sales. Only thing is, at the exact same time, this radical professor from the University of Pennsylvania, James Roth, starts lecturing on the dangers of giving aspirin to children. Research was just starting to show that there's a correlation with Ray's syndrome. Both of these things were happening in 1950, right? Yeah, and it's in 1951, after frantic searching for something new, that McNeil Labs rediscovers our lost acetaminophen, and realizes it has all these great effects. Antipyretic, analgesic, potinator. They think the fact it can kill pain might be their ticket to big bucks. They only have one problem. Who is going to buy it? And they struggle with this problem for two years. They're sitting on the acetaminophen, but they don't know how to market it. Nobody's really heard of it. It's not until 1953, when McNeil Labs sees James Roth give a lecture at his home university in Philly, that the light bulb clicks. This is when it all starts to come together. After listening to Roth talk about the danger of aspirin, McNeil Labs hatch a plan to get Roth to come work for them. They track him down, and a few paychecks and six months later, they have Roth promoting their product as an aspirin alternative. Ah, very sneaky. And within two years, they release the Tylenol Elixir for children. But the story gets even sneakier. McNeil Labs puts their product out, and then they begin to start really preying on everyone's fears of aspirin. They come up with an idea to market Tylenol directly to physicians and hospitals. These guys basically invented the concept of a drug sales representative. Tylenol. I was first given Tylenol in the hospital after a football injury. It worked then, and it still does. Tylenol is the pain reliever hospitals use most. Well, if hospitals trust Tylenol, I can believe in it too. And this approach finally knocked Tylenol out of the park. It was so successful that drug companies aren't really allowed to do it anymore. Now it's ask your doctor if Tylenol is right for you. In fact, they even got the name Tylenol from the drug. So hold up, did they actually create or discover Tylenol, or did they just kind of rediscover in some book? Like, who owns it? The acetaminophen. Nobody, and that's what makes it so interesting. If you look it up, you'll see they never controlled the direct patent for acetaminophen. They just trademarked the name Tylenol and got cozy with doctors and pharmacists. Every commercial today is a way of getting you to think you're buying something special. And it's been a success. Oh, whoa. So what you're saying is that I should just buy acetaminophen at the store, not Tylenol, since it's been the same thing all along? Yep. But don't take it from me. Let's get a doctor on here. I'm Dr. Bostwick. I am a radiologist in Michigan. Are Tylenol and acetaminophen the same thing? Yes. Tylenol is acetaminophen. And the basic difference between them, besides cost, is that binder that holds the acetaminophen into the form of a pill. But what makes the story of Tylenol special isn't its uniqueness. It's its ubiquity. You see, drug companies do this to you all the time. Antibiotics, painkillers, cold medicine. They'll try to get you to believe in buying something expensive, when there's always something cheaper nearby. 
In the world of pharmaceuticals, the story of Tylenol shows that paying less money doesn't mean you're getting less. If you like this story, please consider subscribing. Thanks.